Okay, let's proceed to chapter 16 of my autobiography, Seven Years to Life. This chapter is called Leaps, Fences with a Single Bound. Today, when I think of all the different devices and methods that have been invented to keep us safe, such as seat belts, airbags, fences around pools, and restricted access to places such as rooftops, construction sites, and other places that have the potential to seriously harm us, it amazes me. There are warning labels on everything from food to prescriptions to cigarettes. The reason I bring this to your attention is that when I was growing up as a young boy in the 50s and possibly in the 60s, I do not recall pre precautions surrounding us everywhere. The obvious results of all the warnings about things that are dangerous to our health and safety, for the most part, have greatly reduced tragedies that would have occurred had these warnings not been in place. The following incident that I am going to tell you about took place in the late 50s. Had there been restricted access to the rooftops of our apartment buildings, this incident probably would have never taken place. The rooftops were enjoyed by almost every resident. Depending on the time of day, you could find people enjoying the view or relishing the solace that seven stories high could provide. It was a place where you could go, as the drifters used to say, and let your cares drift right into space. Think about it. Anybody at any time had access to the rooftop. There were those rare days when there was not a soul to be found on the roof, and that was because of the sweltering New York humidity. It was one of these days that, along with some of my friends, we made our way to the rooftop where one of the edges looked down on a fairly busy intersection. It was also a day that I regretted immensely and though our antics did not cause injury or death, it did result in material damage that could have been worse. It also made me understand that there were certain friends of mine whose influence over me was beginning to lead me down a path that I no longer wanted to travel. This incident produced another re revelation, more, humor more humorous than serious, which completely took me by surprise. There were four of us, of which two were brothers. Earlier that day, in some obscure set of bushes, they had found shards of a broken mirror. One of the shards was fairly large and took two people to carry it to the rooftop. Our brilliant plan on that bright sunny day was to have the sun reflect off the mirrored glass into the eyes of the drivers in the intersection below and see if we could wreak a little havoc. You could hear screeching tires below and not long afterward, the unmistakable sound of cars colliding. I mean, I mean, how stupid could we be? Two things happened very quickly. We knew we had to get the hell out of there because news traveled very quickly. And even on our way down the stairs, we could hear people out by the intersection screaming about a blinding reflection coming from the rooftop. I was quite adept at racing down the stairs, and I was the first one out of the building considerably ahead of my friends. Of course, the slowest one of us got caught, and his parents were legally required to pay for the damage to the automobiles. He got his ass beat, and I will give him credit. He never, he never gave anyone else up. It was not funny at the time, but thinking about this incident and writing about it at this moment honestly makes me belly laugh. Here is, wh here is why. My mom always had the sixth sense about me, and it was no different on this day. As I mentioned, I was the first person to escape the crime scene, and I was running towards my apartment entrance, which was about a half a block away. I saw my mom running towards me with murder in her eyes. I, feel, I figured I would deal with her wrath later, and I took a hard left under one of the archways and shot across the street to another part of the complex. I was pretty sure I had lost her, but something made me turn around, and sure enough, she was gaining ground on me. 
honestly, now I knew she was infuriated because she knew I may not have been the leader, but I was part of the team. So now I began to hop fences in order to put some distance between us, and it did not do a damn bit of good. She was this 4 foot 11, 41 year old woman hopping fences like an Olympic hurdler, and in what had to be under two minutes, she tackled me and was slapping the shit out of me. She was a tiny woman, and her assault on me barely had any effect, but I made it sound like I would never walk again. I remember my mom once telling me that she had been a professional ballet dancer. I wish I had remembered that during our little steeplechase, because I definitely would have tried to hide rather than outrun her. She screamed at me and told me she was going to tell my father when he got home and discussed with him about sending me to a boarding school. My father was at sea and would be for the next six months, so even if they had discussed it over the phone, it would be long forgotten by the time he arrived home. All of this trouble, because a few kids had access to the rooftop. It was not long after that, only maintenance men carried roof keys and adults were the only people allowed to have access to the roofs.